Hello everyone and welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I'm going to retest the dropship launch now with bigger boosters. As you can see here, I've decided to put four vectors on each of the boosters that will get the dropship to orbit and hopefully that will save us from using the dropship's own fuel in order to complete orbit and that will allow it to land on Minmus, which is our goal. I was also told that maybe we need to cycle the intakes to make sure that they work and that made sense because in the previous video when we tried to use the jet engines it seemed to be consuming the fuel but it wasn't producing thrust so we'll see if cycling the air intakes will help i'll save before entry into Kerbin's atmosphere to make sure that we can repeat that if necessary another thing that i found troubling was the fact that i had trouble pitching up and i wonder if the control surfaces were working quite right and so we'll check that out. It felt like we were only using the reaction wheel to pull up is basically how it felt. So I want to check that out. It felt very nose heavy, but then, uh, well, it felt very nose heavy during re-entry altogether. So maybe it was just nose heavy. In which case, we'll try and move some of the propellant back a bit to see if that helps. Uh, what I would really like to do is have a fuel dump valve to dump all the oxidizer, which we will not need once we get into the atmosphere and we do not have such a fuel dump valve so there is that but we are going to try this again and we will see if having bigger boosters in this case helps uh, there is a downside to this arrangement of course and that is that we're pulling the center mass down the vector engines do have more control uh, they have more uh, gimbal range but that might not be sufficient and we might need to have larger wing surfaces. It has occurred to me to turn the boosters into a recoverable aircraft of their own. And in that case, they'll have a wing piece in between them and actually be mounted here instead of where they are now. Uh, so basically, there'll be a mounting point here that extends back and an, uh, sort of a V wing going up to them. That would be a very tenuous connection and you know obviously we'll need struts and everything we already have struts but we'll need more struts and it would be dodgy and experimental and probably won't work a lot but you know that's where that's our business so we'll try that at some point for now i just want to see whether this arrangement has enough delta v before we try to do that let's just make sure that the fuel and engines that we have right now are capable of getting this to orbit and then after that we'll worry about the recoverability of this arrangement as long as we know this is the amount of fuel and engines we want then we can add stuff to it to make it recoverable hopefully uh, so that is the plan going forward and let's see how this works we have Hanley Kerman as our Kerbal here and we've got a 2.8 meter per second residual velocity that I mean it, it, it always worries me that seems to be an up-down velocity, right? And but it's causing us to be in fizz warp. I'm gonna just roll it back and roll it out again. Okay, now less residual velocity, and we can do full-time warp. Oh, but now we have Valentina, probably in the tuna can in the bay. Oh gosh, we'll be dumping Valentina on Minmus, and that's if things go well. Okay, anyway. Let's just go with it. Uh, ignition. Well, ignition. And launch. Up it goes. Will it flip? Let's do a roll first. Um, is that the right roll? Oh gosh. Maybe I shouldn't have. No, no. I, I shouldn't have rolled. Oh boy. 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 Oh, we need more fins down below. Okay. Well, this can't really fly as it is right now. It's too heavy. I mean... I don't know what just happened, but... Oh, oh, may maybe it can VTOL-ish. Oh, not like that, it can't. Uh... Um... Uh, oh, it's underwater. It's underwater. 
Somebody had asked about the underwater, whether it's better for planes. Well, sometimes. And sometimes not so much. Maybe we should have just stopped with the engines. But they survived. Well, okay, Hanley survived. Presumably Valentina's in the other piece, because she's in a tuna can in the bay. Uh, let's just revert this. Why don't we just go ahead and try to make it into a plane? Because <laughs> um, uh, we're going to have to put more fins down below, right? Ultimately, it's going to sort of become a plane. Okay, folks. I have done it. It's probably not a good idea, but I've done it. Uh, we have turned this whole business into some semblance of a plane. It might not all hold together. I certainly have put struts. So, yeah, we've got some running there, uh, one running back there, and some between the booster and the body. And we need to fix up our separatrons because now those are in the wrong place. But yeah, uh, it's probably not a good idea. I mean, it's a good idea. It's probably not a good implementation of an idea. Well, it's a thing. We've got our drone control core here, and so that's how we would control it if we ever get to control it. But the first priority is the dropship. Uh, we'll deal with the recovery of the booster when we get to that. So for now, we'll tuck everything in. Instant explosions. Uh, well, sort of. Metamorph and Mark II. Yeah, it, it doesn't like the stress between this wing and the Mark II cabin, it looks like. Not Mark II cabin, Mark II parts. Mark II body. I mean, I'm not surprised by that. We've directly linked the fuel tank, the huge fuel tanks, to the wing. And we've started the tanks to that, but maybe it'll be okay if we strut the wings as well, but I don't know. Uh, no, still a problem. So we might not be able to connect uh, boosters to the wing like that. It will need a stronger part. Now we can't tweak them out to the location that they need to be at if we... Uh, attach them to the body directly, so we are going to need to use a girder. Well, that's not ideal. <laughs> Certainly not the most aerodynamic thing. But uh, we'll try and see if this truss is going to be able to hold it any better than the wings would have. Otherwise, we're just gonna have to abandon the whole turning into a plane thing and at least for now, and instead just put really big fins to stabilize it. Let's see. I wish it did a proper explosion on the pad though, when things aren't staying attached. Well, it's not complaining. We don't currently have a Kerbal in though. Oh no, we do. Hanley's in there. I don't know which seat, but Hanley's in there. It's not reading the right delta V at all. Hmm. I wonder if the truss pieces cross. They shouldn't need to cross feed. This is all in line. There is some fuel in the Mark II parts, but whether we get to use it or not is a whole other business. Let me time warp. Yeah, I don't know why it's reading so little delta V there. Guess we'll find out soon. Maybe things have already broken and I just don't know it and they didn't bother to tell me. Go. Let's just hold up for a bit. It's using the fuel a lot. But I think... Yeah, it is misrepresenting our Delta V. Okay, I'll try and start turning. Oh, oh no, oh, it's all gone pear-shaped. Um, let's try that again. We'll just go straight up for a bit. We'll just go straight up for a bit. I'm just gonna leave it like that for a while. I'll start trying to turn. 
Oh, just starting to try to turn destroyed it. Swear we'll get this over to Minmus one way or another. I don't know if I should call the booster craft the catamaran, maybe? Maybe it qualifies? Okay, so now will I be able to turn? We're past max Q at this point. Nope. <laughs> uh, well, okay. I'll just wait until longer. I'm curious whether there's any hope at all. I guess turning off those control surfaces did not help. It's tough to tell which of the wing pieces is actually the one that it's complaining about. Oh, it did it on its own. It ripped it apart on its own. Even before the place that we had gotten to before. We didn't even get to the speed of sound. Okay, well, alright, we'll just do the fin version. Okay, no complaints from the game so far. And we're stable enough to time warp to morning. And it's a ridiculous assembly of fins at the bottom. And there was a wobble there. Anyway, let's go. Okay. It's too bad we can't trust the Delta V here at all. We'll go straight up for a while. It's still not stable enough to try and turn early, but... We have to turn, I mean... Otherwise, we're not going to make orbit with these boosters and we'll be in the same bind as in the previous video. Gotta limit our acceleration a little bit here. Okay, we're about halfway through the fuel. I need to turn. That's not halfway through our Delta V, but still. It's getting a little bit late here. Okay, I think we're successfully turning. But yeah, that Delta V is just wrong. There's no way that that's correct. Let's just cut that for a sec. And we'll wait until we get into space before doing the rest. Trying to get as much efficiency out of this as possible. But that doesn't look like much fuel right there. I mean, yeah, the jet stage is going to have less in space, that's for sure. But what is this doing? The other two stages are right. That's what I was expecting from them. But there's no way we have 1,500 out of this stage. The fluctuations are because of the gimbling of the engines. Okay, well, we're in space. If it was right right now, we would be able to get to 2,900 meters per second, which we will not. But, we will get to space. Now it says 20. Well, I can believe that now. Uh, but we'll separate these off so that they deorbit. And they are off. I think the nuclear engine must be active. Oops, wrong thing. Ah, good. Alright, we'll wait until we're closer to Apoapsis and then use it. Okay, we're in space with most of our fuel this time. Alright, that's good enough for now. Let's plot for Minmus. We'll just do an off-plane transfer, I think. Oh, it's doing weird stuff because it's a nuclear stage. This is not how it's gonna go. <laughs> this is not how it's gonna go at all, game. It's not gonna cost 2,000 either. It's not gonna be anywhere... You know what? Forget it. <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. I don't care about you, game. That's, um... What can I do to convince it to show me the truth? It is definitely not gonna cost 2,000 to get to Minmus. It's definitely not gonna do this. This is, this is not what it's gonna do. And it doesn't show me an encounter at all. Even though 2A and 2B are really close together and probably ought to be an encounter, you see that? Distance from planet, 68 kilometers. Well, 
that's an encounter in my book. <laughs> that's the off-plane transfer right there. It's not going to cost 2246 Mark my words. And it's not going to have a weird bend right here. That's that's not right. Maybe it's, it's thinking we're switching to the thuds is why it has that bend there. We probably shouldn't... But because it's doing that bend there, it's getting the timing wrong. We should probably start way earlier. Something like that. And without the bend, you'll see that we'll get the right thing. I'll, as usual, plot for what I think I ought to do. Darn it, we are not going to take 2,246. We'll ignore the plot entirely. We'll burn prograde, just straight prograde. And it'll work out somehow. Does the burn take long? Yeah, with the nuclear stage, the burn takes long. It's not going to double the delta V cost, though. I'm even going to start now. Okay, so we can time warp a bit. I'll do 4x time warp. That's not really holding prograde during... Oops. During time warp, though, I don't want it to lean up like that. Yeah, it just... I mean, it's got to take a long time to do this burn, but not nearly as long as it thought it would, because it was planning for a 2,000 meter per second burn. Another way we could do it, though, is actually come around again. Yeah, I'll, I'll cut it here, and we'll come around again. Let's see if plotting works now, because it should all be doable on this stage now. Well, I mean, it was doable on this stage before, too. Um, but now it's accepting that it can get out there with this stage's amount of fuel. I don't know what problem it had before, but now it can read that with our fuel right now, we can get there. Okay, we'll do this one as long as the burn seems sensible to me. Two, one, go. And we proceed. I'll do this without time warp to ensure as much precision as possible. Honestly, I think it'd be better if I just went prograde at this point. And I'm going to. There's a moon encounter there though. I think it's wasting a bit of fuel the way it's going. Or a lot of fuel actually. Okay. Yep. Oh, uh, that's too far. Alright, but we'll take that. Okay, we have our transit. Well, God knows what our delta V is going to be. But I think I've turned off the nuclear engine and we've activated the thuds, which means we need to control from here now. And we are headed over to Minmus. We should be headed over to Minmus with enough propellants in order to do what we were planning to do. Okay, it doesn't matter to me where we land as long as we land. Radial in. That's a good start. We underfueled the oxidizer so that we can use the jet engine when we get back to Kerbin. So that is intentional, that imbalance there. Okay, there's Minmus. Okay, capture burn. And that'll do it for now. We'll go to surface velocity. Then we are going to land in daylight. Why don't we... Well, it's going to rotate a bit. I would like to land in this flat here, just for safety. But we're going around that way, so it's going to rotate a lot. This canyon doesn't... not canyon, the uh, crater doesn't look too bad. Yeah, right in line, so let's get started with that. Okay, well, we're a little bit high up, but it should work out. It's a little bit bumpier here than it looked like on the map. Okay, let's take that. We're dropping down like that. Should be safe. <laughs> let's get a better roll orientation. Hanley Kerman. 
Will he successfully deliver his payload to the surface of Minmus? Even now, Minmus is rotating a bit. I'd, I'd like to land over here. I don't know how long it'll take for us to get down there. But I definitely don't want to hit that bit. That's bad news. Really dropping. There's a bit of a edge there. But I mean, this is long. This has long landing gear, so it should be able to take some of that. And we'll drop the stuff, the payload out of the bay, and then just go off. We don't need the pay the payload to actually clear the bay. Seems like we're coming down here-ish. I don't want that hill. But, you know, Mimus gravity is pretty low, so it's not that bad. Eh, we've got time. But it's not really following the vector very well, so I've got to overdo it. So that I can steer it a little bit. Oh, there's our shadow. Wheels should be able to take a lot of speed, actually, but we'll see. Sure is bumpy around here. This is a lot slopier than I thought it was going to be. Wow. There's something over there. Well, I think we're in a good spot. I'm going to pre-apply the brakes, I think. Oop. A little bit rough on the tail. Not the ideal landing spot for sure. Uh, before things go too pear-shaped, I'm gonna open the cargo bay. And drop out the tuna can if I can see it that. Well, that seems right. Okay, docking acquiring force zero. And undock. And the tuna can is plopped. We have laid an egg. That'll be the official sort of terminology. The dropship has laid an egg. <laughs> okay, I think we can move on. It says 707. I sort of believe it now. I guess the tuna can might have been confusing it. I don't know how, but... Okay. Off we go. We have plopped our payload. It's, it was a light payload, so not a huge challenge. We'll just clear all the obstructions and then we'll wait until Apoapsis before completing orbit. And we'll do it all with the FUDs. We'll reserve the nuclear engine for the trip back. Moon is a much bigger challenge. And that will require some refueling of the nuclear engine prior to us landing, I think. We'll use the nuclear engine, so we would refuel in lunar orbit and use the nuclear engine to start our burn, our descent burn. Use the thuds in the latter part for the last 300 meters per second or so. Have the thuds lift off and get us a good apoapsis and then have the nuclear engine complete orbit and then bring us back. Uh, I think we'll need some refueling in lunar orbit for that to happen. And it also depends on the payload we're carrying. The heavier the payload, the more we'll need the refueling. There are probably some payloads that we would need to refuel in Minmus orbit for. I'm trying to get our orbit more equatorial here. Might make it easier to come back. Alright, but we have plenty of Delta V in the thud stage, and we we are in orbit. So we could carry a heavier payload down for sure. I'll even use our spare Delta V to try and make this equatorial to make returning easier. 
Okay, plotting for our return. We have to be careful because it might fool us. We know we should make our burn here. Yeah, it's saying that we're gonna go out and go into escape even though we're not going to be going out and going into escape. So it's difficult to plan. I know, I'll use 130 here. We'll need at least that much. And we'll probably need more afterwards. And I'm gonna switch off the thuds and activate the nuke to do this. That's per our plan. So yeah, I think we're gonna go into a low, lower orbit that gets closer to Kerbin, but it's telling me different, but I am going to ignore it because it's wrong. Oh, and we should control from the cockpit now. Let's not forget that. It says that the burn will take 8 seconds, but I very much don't believe it's gonna take 8 seconds with the nuclear engine. I think it's still reading the thuds. Okay, well, we'll go. Yep, we're going into... well, it's not really a lower orbit, but it's definitely not the orbit that it says we were going into. I think... I think it's still telling me a lie here. I think it's still telling me a lie. So I'm gonna keep burning until we have a nice straight orbit in the back there. And this is still all lies. Okay. So yeah, it's not telling me the right delta V there. It's not telling me the right path out. But we know what we're doing here. And we are departing Minmus. Despite the obstacles, we will persevere. And as expected, we're in a nice low orbit. Uh, not the orbit that was telling us at all. It says our surface velocity is something crazy though. Or uh, target, orbit. Surface. Well, maybe surface velocity is just weird. That, that's fine. That's not unusual. As long as orbital velocity is okay. The reason I wanted it mostly equatorial around Minmus is that would leave us more equatorial around Kerbin. But we're certainly not very equatorial. I think we can take the opportunity to change that, which will help us hit the space center as well. And remember, with big inclination changes, just don't let it follow the marker. It generally doesn't know what it's doing. Previously, 26 kilometers have been good enough, I think. We'll try that again. But we're still pretty heavy with a lot of oxidizer. So we're just trying to capture. We're definitely not immediately trying to come down. We are in line with the Space Center though, so you never know. The periapsis is right over the Space Center basically. Let's see, try a 40 degree pitch up. And if it looks like it's having trouble, I'll try and shift the fuel to help. Though that might have us flipping out. But then, without re-entry heating being a problem, we don't have to worry too much about flipping out. So basically it's between that tank and that tank. And that one's the one in the front, that one's the one in the back. So if we have trouble holding pitch up, we want to... Sorry it's so big. I'd like it smaller, but... Um, if we have trouble holding the pitch up, we can try to shift some of the mass back to move the center of mass back. Maybe I should save. We'll see how much pitch authority it's using. I'm expecting to pump this out and that in. Well, let's start. Whoa, okay, that's too much. Uh, it went too fast. It's too fast. Well, we spin, spun out of control. Great. Well, let's just hit equals on all of them. Uh, it looks like we're coming straight down. I'm gonna dump the hydrogen fuel. I did save before entry, so we can try something else.
Well, it's holding prograde. Let me try and roll. Uh, as before, we have trouble pulling up. Okay, I'm gonna try and control from here. And start using the thuds. Oh, it had a structural link failure from between the metamorph and the cargo bay. Uh, but, but we have a save. Okay, well, we're already in the atmosphere. This time I'm not going to shift the fuel. <laughs> Let's not do that. Um, and in fact, I'm going to use the nerve right now. To boost up a bit. in the hope that we can at least dump the fuel, but also avoid direct entry. It's pitching down because it can't control and keep that high pitch. We'll just accept that. I think we'll cut that. I think we'll be alright as long as we don't flip her out all over the place. Now, the darn linkage between the wings and the cargo bay, it's not like we haven't strutted. We have two struts to each of the wings. Well, without any interference on my part, we're going to get to a nicer low orbit so that we can prepare for a landing properly. But, we know we're nose heavy. And that's gonna cause problems. On the other hand, we could just come straight down controlling from the top port and try that. That'll probably still for force us nose down, though. Well, we're going to disable the intakes as we go up and we'll re-enable them afterwards. In the hope that that solves the jet engine problem and gives us the jet engine as an option. I think I will create a maneuver right here to bring that apoapsis down and lift the periapsis. Okay, just basically using some of the nerves fuel to do a correction here. In fact, we'll probably use all of the nerves fuel like this. Okay, that is it for the nerve. But I'll save again. Pretty sure trying to pitch up with this is futile, but I'll give it a go. Well, I'm gonna pitch down a bit. It's maxing out the pitch anyway. If we can glide, we might as well glide, because we're a long way from the Space Center anyway. We're probably gonna land somewhere in the desert here. We'll see. I don't know if we're gonna get much glide out of this. Maybe we will. We sort of did last time. We don't actually need to control from up there in order to use the thuds. We could use the thud fuel if necessary. I sort of missed that trick last time. We could have probably saved it using the thuds. We are really gliding now. Um, I feel like I ought to just go down. Otherwise this is going to take too long and we're going to end up in water. Doesn't super duper want to do anything but point at prograde. Okay. Activating intakes. Verifying both are active. I don't know which is safest, landing vertically or landing horizontally. But we tested horizontal, so... I think we should go with that. Trying to turn over here. If we can coax it to do that. Okay, well, we're gonna have trouble pulling up now. But we are subsonic, let's try the jet. 
Okay, well, it's visibly producing thrust. And it can also thrust vector, so I think it's helping us with pulling up here. Those dunes, though, how wrinkly are they? How much bumpiness are we expecting out of those dunes? Wish I was lighting in this direction. <laughs> Uh, why do they all, all have to be arrayed against me? There's a sort of a patch here, I think. Depends how you look at that. Big gear down. Oh, it broke! It just breaks. Ah. Uh, okay, what's what, what we got here? Yeah, metamorph and cargo failure on structural linkage. Okay, well I've had enough of this particular metamorph failure of structural linkage. Uh, do we have to replace it with the heavy wings? The heavy wings are really heavy. <laughs> the heavy wings are super heavy. So I don't know if I want to do that. But this is a persistent problem, obviously. We might have to go there. I don't even know if that will solve the problem. But yeah, well, this is the situation with the dropship. We nearly made it. We nearly made it back. We still have the save. Maybe there's a way to be gentle with it. But anyway, I'll leave it. Ah, oh, it crashed. Anyway, I'll leave it for later. Uh, we'll have to call it for now. This is how far we've gotten. And the game's just not be being fair about it. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.